Hello folks, this is Steve AB4EL. I have the window open. It's really nice. It's the middle of your night. It's not quite the end of my day. Nothing in this episode is a promotion, nor is it a recommendation. Now the actual purpose of this is to make fun of somebody. The actual purpose is... I showed you that I bought this for an uh, RF noise. Sometimes noise starts to get into my ham radio and I don't know if it's a bad insulator here or it's actually coming from the sun. And the radio's been sitting in the box. I paid about $23 for it. But it has a uh, record mode. And you guys may or may not remember that I usually am doing these kind of sessions recording using my flip phone. Well, now I'm using this to see what the quality of it is. My little test, just listening to it, seemed to be okay. So please bear with me. And then the second part of it is, when I try to match the audio, dub the audio, see the... The webcam has a microphone, but I don't use that audio stream. I dub the separate external recording. And using the flip phone, the clock in the flip phone is almost exactly in sync, tick, 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 with the clock in my computer. So when I line up the beginning, the end works out. Now, I've used recorders where that didn't happen, and I had to use Audacity to um, so you put the two recordings in here, and then you stretch or you compress one of them to make it match the other one. I don't want the audio from the video, but I use that as the baseline. I'm just showing you a blank screen. All right, now I'm going to pick on a particular article on Bleeping Computer. You know I look at Bleeping Computer every day. This is the one I like. France demands Apple pull iPhone 12. Now, they just announced a new model, and I think 12 is like two years ago, but I guess it's still being sold. I don't know. I don't even follow them. Last time I used an Apple product, literally, the last time I used any Apple product was a Mac when I was working for a few months in Mexico in 1991-92. Yay, Linux! Yay, Windows! France demands Apple pull iPhone 12 due to high RF radiation levels. Now, you know that every day I publish a video that's a recording of ham radio operators, usually old farts, that get on and talk to each other for hours on end. You see the receiver. But it can transmit, too, and you've seen the videos where I work like a contest and you hear me transmitting. Well, the radio only gets out because the radio power that's modulated is going out a coaxial cable to an antenna that's about 40 feet away, maybe 30 feet up. And some of that power is coming back onto me. Some people use handy talkies. The power is right next to your brain. Five watts. Same thing when you're doing your cell phone, only the cell phone power is considerably lower. I don't know what's... Wait a minute. What is typical cell phone transmit power. Let's see. There you go. 
Cell phones have low power transmitters in them. Many cell phones have two signal strengths, 0.6 watts. Oh! 0.6 watts and five, 3 watts. Comparison, most CB radios transmitted 4 watts. No, they don't. They transmitted higher than that. Okay. So, like, the ham radio handy talkies are typically 5 watts. So, for the more power, mine is probably 6 tenths of a watt. I thought it was less than that. Now, where is this going? The Agence Nationale de Frequence has asked Apple to withdraw iPhone 12 smartphones from the French market because the device emits radio frequency energy that is beyond the limit permitted to be absorbed by the human body. The agency tested over 140 mobile devices from various vendors to check for compliance with specific absorption rate values, SAR. So if you say SAR, So I just add the word absorption. SAR specific absorption rate Wikipedia. Specific absorption rate SAR is a measure of the rate at which energy is absorbed by a unit mass of a human body or organ when exposed to a radio frequency electromagnetic field, it is defined as the power absorbed per mass of tissue and has units in watts per kilogram. The foods that you put into the microwave have varying SAR values at the microwave frequencies. And those values are very different than if you were using energy from my radio at 7 megahertz. So I just added a dimension to it. It has to do with what kind of tissue, and it has to do with what the frequency is. They're giving a general... definition, but look, I haven't read this article. I just got a feeling that there would be an article out there that explains it. SAR measures the exposure to fields between 10 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, which is long wave. That's what the earliest radios used. The wavelength was like a mile long. And 10 gigahertz, known as, which are, what's, what are 10 gigahertz used for? Satellite communication between the ground and the stuff up there. It's really line of sight, and it can't stand any objects in between because everything gets reflected. Would 10 gigahertz heat your soup? Yes. Would 100 kilohertz? No even at the same power. Why? Because what's in your soup doesn't have the wavelength absorption characteristic needed to really absorb a lot of the energy. But at 10 gigahertz, actually at 10 gigahertz it might just reflect off. You might have to have it at 4 gigahertz. That doesn't sound like a big change, but it is. It's commonly used to measure power absorbed from mobile phones and during MRI scans. Oh! 
MRI scans are you in the microwave oven. Do you follow that? Differential, different tissues in your body differentially absorb different amounts of energy as the radio wave tries to go through you under the influence of a strong magnetic field. The value depends heavily on the geometry of the part of the body. I said you, you, you're walkie-talkie and your cell phone are up here against the... It's not affecting your toes. Got it? The geometry of the part of the body that's exposed to RF energy and on the exact location in geometry of the RF source. Thus, tests must be made for each specific source, such as a mobile phone model, and at the intended position of use. Implied in this is the human body and most likely the human head and heart and lungs and glands in your throat. Got it? Mobile phone SAR testing. Read it online. Oh! When measuring the SAR due to mobile phone, the phone is placed against a representation of a human head, an SAR phantom, in talk position. The SAR value is then measured at the location that has the highest absorption rate in the entire head. So they put an electronic device in there and they can just check to see what it is. And, and the phantom head is made of materials to simulate the path absorption that your head really does. You might be using a cattle head. Who knows? Read the article. You're wondering where this is going. <clears throat> Many regulatory bodies worldwide set safety limits for SAR levels to ensure that consumers enjoy their electronics, especially mobile phones or ham radios, with minimized risk. The Federal Communications Commission in the U.S. has set an SAR limit of 1.6 watts per kilogram, while the European Union Council recommended 2 watts per kilogram of body tissue and 4 watts per kilogram for the more susceptible limbs like wrist and... Why, why is the hand and wrist more susceptible? Because you're holding the phone and it's closer than your brain. Did you follow that? Read the rest of it. So, as such, the agency demands that, this is the French authority, that Apple withdraw all iPhone 12s from the French market and take the required action to make them compliant with European regulations. If Apple fails to remediate the exceeding SAR level, the agency threatens to impose, impose a forced recall on the product, so current owners of iPhone 12 will have to return them to the vendor and receive a replacement. So this is a big deal. Now remember, I'm actually doing this to see if the sound radiation from my mouth is being recorded in a pleasant enough form by that $22 gadget. And if I can conveniently use that recording on a SIM card, plug it into my computer to dub over in this video. But it's not finished. They mentioned the FCC. American Radio Relay League. I'm a member. ARRL measure RF exposure. That's the search. To use the RF exposure calculator, fill in the form below with your operating power and 10 again. You're talking about me and operating frequency. Depending on how far above ground the RF source is located, meaning the antenna, 
you might want to consider ground reflections and then click calculate. Amateur radio is basically a safe activity. In recent years, however, there's been considerable discussion and concern about possible hazards of electromagnetic radiation, including RF energy and power frequency, blah, blah, blah. To allay such concerns, the FCC set limits on the amount, blah, blah, blah. We already know that. As detailed in the May 20, 2023 QST article by N9GL, I may be 4EL, the rules may have taken effect on May 3rd, 2021, now require amateur radio operators to perform station evaluations. Just as the French government agency evaluated all kinds of cell phones and picked on Apple i12s, the amateur radio service is no longer categorically excluded from certain aspects of RF exposure rules and licensees are no longer avoid, can avoid performing an exposure assessment simply because they are transmitting below a given power. I transmitted about 60 watts. A lot of the recordings you hear that I post, they're running a thousand or more. A two-year transition period was implemented to allow existing stations to make any necessary blah, 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 blah. Transition period ends on May 3rd, 2023, and all transmitters operating in the U.S. are expected to comply with the exposure rules. Now, apparently they don't say I have to actually report the number to the FCC. I don't know. But another link takes us to this page, which is where we actually got the first thing. I haven't done this yet, but I'll do it. But there was a part of this I wanted to show you because I thought when I got all the way down to the bottom that it was, it put a smile on my face. So this is actually the calculator form online. Power at the antenna. I know I'm transmitting with 60 watts. Yeah, you know, it still says it's recording. But there are losses in the transmission line before it gets to the antenna. Transmit duty cycle. If you transmit for five minutes and then receive for 10 minutes, you can set those values. Antenna gain. Probably mine is 3 dB. Operating frequency, I almost always am on the 7 megahertz band. So I fill in those values. And then I say, okay, they've got an che automatic check mark on it, ground reflections. The radio waves normally go off this way, but some go this way and reflect at an angle. So you, they say there's a... If you would like to receive future announcements, blah, 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 now what you do is you put in your email address, which is optional, and any comments that are optional, and then you click on calculate. I haven't done this, but I can tell you what's going to happen. This will connect back to some computer in Newington, Connecticut, or with whomever they're contracting with. Newington, Connecticut is the headquarters building of the American Radio Relay League. Percy Maxim. This calculator should not be used for antennas that are less than 8 inches from a person. So it doesn't apply to the handy talkies. Presumably what happens is if you fill in the first blanks and then you click Calculate, it sends that information to Newington, Connecticut or whoever there is doing it for them. The computer makes the calculation 
and then it fills in the web page. All right. Results for a controlled environment and results for an uncontrolled environment, whatever that means. And it's in milliwatts per centimeter squared, minimum compliance distance, minimum compliance distance in meters. So what they're saying is they're going to tell you how far away the antenna needs to be. So if it's how do I know that? Power at the antenna. They don't ask how far the antenna is away. I told you how far mine is, but they don't ask that. So with these factors, how much power at the antenna, what frequency, da -da -da, they then tell you how far away the antenna has to be to meet the minimum requirement of exposure, maximum, requ maximum exposure allowed. Minimum distance for maximum exposure allowed. Do you see how I figured that out? They don't say it. It's one of my criticisms. I may put it in the comments. What's the difference between a controlled and an uncontrolled environment? Uncontrolled environment would be if the antenna is moving around for some reason. Or, you follow? How far you are, where you are from whatever the, somebody using one. So you can calculate this for somebody else using a transmitter near you. Now here's the part that made me smile. I want to read it out loud. The original FCC bulletin came out in 1985, but was revised in 1997, and it, and that's what they're relying on, ARRL, in order to, but the way meant credits. Here's the part I really liked. Now you heard the dates about when. Let's see if OET Bulletin 65, Federal Communications Commission, April, August 1st, 1997, evaluating compliance with FCC guidelines for human exposure to radio. It's the first time I've ever seen this. Isn't the search engine great? OE, Office of Engineering and Technology, OET. There's all the people that they consulted in order to do this. So it would be something like Richard A. Tell of Richard A. T Richard Tell Associates, but uh, Rory Van Tweel, Hewlett Packard Laboratories. I'm just reading at random. Clarence M. Beveridge. There's a type of antenna known as a beverage antenna. Clarence M. Beverage Communications Technologies. Oh, all right. There we go. You know how I like to have fun. Some of these were in 1997. Clarence M. Beverage Communication Technologies Incorporated. He could be dead in the wall, in the grave. Research gate. Three research items. Communication Technology, Incorporated, Office of the President, Current Position Engineer. Increasing land costs, ever more restrictive land use regulations in the public's impression that towers are aesthetically distasteful. This is 2004, so he was active have led to continuing interest in physically small transmitting antennas for use by broadcasters operating in the 535 to 1705 kilohertz, that's AM radio. In this paper, the author thought AM radio was almost dead. 
Haven't you ever seen AM radio towers? I don't want that extra. So that's what he, I, these three articles are such that he's, he was a consultant to the AM broadcast station building industry. Isn't the search engine great? Now back to the calculator. See, I just picked one at random and he's probably retired, which is why the last one was in 2000 and something. But we can see why he may have been used as one of the committee of people, consultants, for this bulletin. Credits. The JavaScript contained on this page. Oh, I was wrong. The JavaScript is in this page. It doesn't actually get transmitted to them. The JavaScript contained in the, on this page was derived from a public domain BASIC program. Have you ever programmed in BASIC? That was actually the first programming language I ever used. And no, it wasn't Microsoft BASIC. Public domain BASIC program written by Wayne Overbrook, N6NB and published in January 1997 issue of CQVHF. That's a magazine that doesn't exist anymore. On page 33, it's the new license, GNU. This version of the calculator is an iteration of what was generously provided by the Lake Washington Ham Club, Kirkland, Washington. Did you understand what that said? The original one using that document from the FCC Now it's redirecting me to this. There's his website. Welcome to n6nb.com. This site is about amateur radio. It discusses topics such as VHF, UHF, weak signal operating, roving, quaggy antenna, you don't know that. Um, field day site, DX contest in Mexico. I've operated from Mexico. A personal note. I've been involved in many aspects of ham radio for over 65 years that I've been licensed. He's probably as old as I am. Just because the website's here doesn't mean he's alive. In the 1960s, I discovered mountain topping. When I worked for the Mountain Cloud Chemistry Program, I used to have my ham radio five watt thing like this and I used to be able to listen to the morning Mount Mitchell North Carolina and listen to the morning two meter ham radio traffic from Atlanta Georgia not they wouldn't they couldn't hear me but I could hear them we're at 6,840 feet or whatever it is highest peak north east of the Mississippi River and I served Four terms as an elected ARL vice general in the 1990s. I co-authored a book about computer programs for amateur radio, 1984. 1984. PCs, back that's when I, I started programming in 1983. I also wrote several college textbooks, including 20 editions of Major Principles of Media Law and was a university professor for 37 years, mostly at California State Fullerton. All right. Is he, is, now here's the question. Is he still alive? Well, let's look at his FCC license. Is it valid? Yep. It's still active, so he's still alive. And he's probably as old as Biden. Nothing wrong with that. So I've just taken you on a little bit of a trip. So, <clears throat> who are the Lake Washington Ham Radio Club in Kirkland? Let's 
September 23rd, our next Rain or Shine Meetup event. YouthNet, returning fall 2023, September 9th club meeting. 11 a.m. daily, Health and Wellness Net. Wait a minute. I wanted to just show you the pictures of the guys. And we can see why they have a health and open image in a new tab. There you go. So one of the features of amateur radio is the probably is that it's possible that it's even overweighted in older people like me. I started when I was 14. All right. So you know about the rag chew things I do? That's what they do. That's what they mean by that. So there's an evening net. Nets, resources, repeaters, new member orientation, RF exposure calculator. This is the first time I've been to this site. So this is a rehash. Oh, there it is. There it is. That's why they're thanking them. They use the JavaScript code from way the hell back or somebody's basic program and they rewrote it as JavaScript and there it is on their website and they generously allow the American Radio Relay League to also have that on one of their pages. You see what you learn by just wandering around a little bit if you're brainstorming at the same time and maybe even have a little bit of reminiscence in there to give you some background context to help make the connections that might not be obvious to just any Joe who's driving by. The kind of stuff I'm talking about is specialized knowledge if you think about it. If you were to ask me about carpentry, how to build your own house, I wouldn't have a clue. But the guy that we studied together and we got our ham radio licenses at the same, more or less the same time back when we were 14 years old, built his own house because his father was a carpenter and he also worked as a carpenter for a while. And he built the house he's still living in with his wife. Specialized knowledge. That's what I mean by that phrase. So I thought I would pick on Apple and iPhones. And the upshot of this is they're not picking on Apple just for the fun of it. They've got the numbers. They're giving them leeway. Can you change your code in the firmware and cut the power back? Is that under your control? See, there's a lot of complaints about the way Apple does things, non-repairable. A lot of parts that have serial numbers in them, and when the iPhone starts, it actually goes through a roll call. And if it finds that somebody's changed the screen, oh, it's an Apple screen, you broke yours, but it isn't the right serial number, they won't let you use the phone. Because in order to get a new replacement screen, you have to have Apple do it. And then they'll re-register it with the secret stuff that they have, software, that knows where that is in all of the firmware on the iPhone that's a secret and encrypted. So Francis is saying, we don't know anything about the internal workings of your radios. If you can change this in your firmware and meet compliance, well then fine, otherwise you're going to have to buy them all back, at least the ones in France. And they gave them a deadline. You'll be seeing more of this kind of stuff as the 
the world wises up. Steve A. before y'all. Testing the recorder. Letting my mind wander while I'm also brainstorming based on personal specialized kind of information which helps me select what I'm interested in and to understand new things I've never seen before to build to develop the big picture that's in my mind expand it build the cobweb out <laughs> build the cobweb in my head out further saying see you in 73